it wasn't always like this. There was a sense of normalcy. A normalcy I took for granted. I was a glass half full. But now, just empty. As summer approaches, I want to move forward. I want what's next. I want the next normal. Oh, you're one-handed? Do you want All over my arm. <laughs> you're welcome. Look at that. Mark, mark, mark. Okay, I'm doing it wrong! Oh, you gotta tip it. You gotta tip it. You gotta tip the glass. You gotta tip it. Holy foam! <laughs> Look at how much foam you have there. Is that not a good thing? No. Look at the difference. <laughs> Look at the difference in foam. Oh, so that's why you tip it. Yes. Cool. Cheers. Sup, oh. homies. What's up, everybody? Snake Killian. If you're uh, new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new here, that's pretty dope. Thank you. <laughs> and also dope if you're new here as well. This is Mark Goodwin. How's it going? Marky G. That's right. Probably seen him Goodwin before. Visuals. And today we're gonna show you how we made this beer commercial from start to finish. So me and Mark made this video. Uh, we co-directed, co-produced, co-edited, co-created, co co-everything. Co co-everything. So. We linked up with Brockton Beer Company, who was partnering in collaboration with Untold Brewing Company, to create this new beer called The, the Next, Next Normal. Normal. Good job. Thank you. That was improvised. Mm -hmm. So they hired us to make this commercial, and now we're gonna take you guys through our step-by-step -step process and how we made this thing. All right, so step one was figuring out what our client wanted. So essentially what they wanted was to highlight pre-COVID and post-COVID. Well, what we hope to be post-COVID. So they wanted us to highlight how we took everything for granted and how essentially we're looking forward to the, to the new normal, or the next normal. They also wanted like a like a storytelling, more cinematic approach, mm -hmm. not like a like a B-roll commercial. They wanted something that, that communicated in a storytelling format. So step two for us was actually song selection. Um, I know for me personally, Finding, finding music is a big first step mm -hmm. whenever I make a video. I think you more more so than me too. Yeah, because like once you find that song, you can just envision the video in your head from there essentially. But. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we did. We used Artlist and went through the entire library looking for songs and really what it came down to to picking the song was as simple as can we picture a beer commercial when we hear this song? And that was the song we decided on. So this was all my idea, actually. I came with the script myself. Nick didn't help me out so much. <laughs> I'm just like ripping off your work to get a YouTube video in. Oh yeah, no, but for real. Um, <clears throat> Step three. I thought it'd be cool if you would perso personify or told the story from this per perspective of an empty beer glass like this one. Oh, it was this one actually, but. Um, so we just wanted to, oh frick. What am I saying? Basically trying to communicate that this beer glass once was full, now empty, and hoping for the better. Yes. That. What do you said? It was my idea originally though. So. It was Mark's idea to do this. This, con <laughs> this concept was your idea. You, we did, so we sat down and we had this brainstorming session and we, you know, we're trying to come up with like a person yeah. or like, you know, who this should be and yeah, I, was actually, just thought, I just thought it'd be way easier if we just used a an, an object. That yeah. was a big part of it. Yeah. It was a big part of it was instead of having all these people involved and in trying to coordinate our schedule. So we also had a pretty tight timeline. Like we didn't have a lot of time to put this together. And we felt that having a lot of people would be a lot more scheduling, take a lot more time. So Mark's idea of just using one object eliminated that factor mm -hmm. it, it, and we were the only ones that needed to coordinate a schedule. Yeah. So from there, we just emailed uh, back and forth from our client at Brockton Beer Company, getting exactly what he wanted to see on the screen. And we got like a rough script written by him and we took his his like main points and like adapted his points into our own script to like adapt to our beer glass commercial instead. So it was just sort of a blending of the two ideas from his and ours. Mm -hmm. So step four was making our shot list. So now we have the script, we can start picking our shots. 
one of the shots that you see repeated throughout the entirety pretty much of this commercial is the beer glass in the center of the frame. And the reason we did that was pretty simple. I mean, when you put something in the center, you want your audience's attention to be on that thing. It's also, there's a black background for some of the shots, so it was really the only thing to look at. But um, did you just burp? <laughs> I did. I'm trying to hold That's it. Going I was trying to hold it. I'm I was trying it. to hold it. I'm putting it. <laughs> so aside from that shot, we got a few close-up shots of the glass too, and uh, we did a few match cuts from these too, just to really emphasize that we were now in a flashback, um, seeing how different the shots were, except for like obviously the match cut portion of it, but um, how there was now like it went from empty to like half full to being in a black backdrop to like now in a bar or like the fire pit scene. Step five was just shooting it, shooting the production. So day one, we shot like 90% of the black backdrop. Right freaking here, baby. Right here, oh, right baby, here. on the other side of the camera on that wall. Just black poster board, a little duct tape, and you got a black backdrop. Um, our second location, we shot at a bar I had connects to uh, through client, through work. I had connects. Uh, I had connects. I had some connects. I had some connects. Shout out to Emily, not his wife, another Emily. Shout out to Emily for letting us use your bar. Um, that's where the second shot was, or shoot was. And then our third shoot was... In my in-law's backyard in -law's at the fire pit. And honestly, just, you know, everyone that was home, like, we just asked them, like, hey, can you stand in the background? And they were like, okay. So they just stood in the background, it was cool. I would say that on the a more technical side of filming it, not just like locations and where we shot, but like how we shot it was, was pretty simple. Every shot was just a static shot. Like just put the camera on a tripod, framed up our glass and hit record. The only thing that I would say would even was a little difficult was just trying to line up the glass for the match cuts mm -hmm. to make sure it was as perfect as we can get it. We did fix a lot of it in post to make yeah. sure it lined up perfectly. But overall it was a really simple shoot. Like yeah. all the movement was done in post-production. Yeah, like each shooting day took like maybe half hour max, besides maybe like the bar, because there was some more implications of that shoot. Um, shoot. But um, yeah, fairly simple shoot. Mm -hmm. With the bar scene, I got to, that was my hand shooting it. And then Yours the truly. His campfire sh shot, me and Mark just hit record, and then we went and stood in the background, which was just- to add more life in the shot. A little more a little life. life. Because if you're bulka, is good enough, you won't even see people. It's just totally blurred out. Is that the right? If you're what? Boca? Boca? That's like the blur. Is that what it's called? Boca. Jewish word? Boca. Boca is defined as the effect oh. of, soft, of a soft out of focus background. How do you pronounce it? Boca. Boca. That was so. The campfire shots, Mark and I actually got to be in because we used to record and the bouquet <laughs> was blurry enough where you didn't even really see us, but we just added more life, as Mark said, to the- As I said. As Mark said to the shot. <laughs> so step six was editing. Uh, we essentially just sat down here and edited for maybe like two to three hours straight and we got that freaking video done in two time. God, I hurt my hand. But yeah, we just sat down for like two or three hours to crank that thing out. We had a few, few bumps in the road. Um, mm. I think the hardest thing about editing was the turntable shot. So you mm -hmm. see the, the can and then the double can reveal. Just lining that up perfectly and getting that transition right. Took a while. Yeah. Took a while. We hated it for like a good 40 minutes. Like there was a good period where we were like, I don't we like can't this at all. Send this. Like we can't send this. But then, we all actually, I think the, the effect was non-additive dissolve. Yeah, which we and weren't planning on using originally, but we thought- I've never used, yeah, ever. Neither. But it worked out perfectly for that specific shot transition between, because those are two different shots, they're not the same. There's the mm -hmm. single can and then the double can. Those are two different shots that we had to piece together. Mm -hmm. The light switch, the glasses clinking, we added like an echo to, each and I don't know, I just added so, so it. Sounded good. so good in our opinion. Now that we're on the topic of the light switch turning on, that was something that we just decided to do while we were editing. I think I suggested it was because it the the video started from black and we needed a reason for there to be light. And mm -hmm. so and it also worked out because now we're when we transitioned we could use that yeah. as a way 
that made sense. It wasn't like it was randomly. It would just add more digestive digestive sound, like add more life to the video again. You know, mm -hmm. make it see, make it more relatable. Yep. Are you gonna drink the rest of this? No. Okay. More from me. So pretty much the whole process was just lining up our shots with the soundtrack we picked, and then um, sound design, and then color correction. And finally, we had to move on to our voiceover. So step seven was finding our voiceover, which we got from Fiverr.com. And no, this is not sponsored by Fiverr. I do not have the luxury of being sponsored by Fiverr to make this video, but our friend at Vox2 Studio provided us with a pretty- That silky, yeah. godly voice you heard, Vox2 yeah. Studios. I had people comment and be like, that dude sounds like Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. It wasn't always like this. So I actually ordered the voiceover from Vasu Studios and it was a fairly simple process. All you gotta do is explain like what you're looking for, what the tone is, what the mood is, and how many words and the kind of turnaround time looking for. And he, this, my man, got us our voiceover back within like five hours. It's crazy. Five hours, like max, mm -hmm. if that. Um, so big shout out to Vasu Studios, he's an awesome guy. If you guys want a voice like his for your videos, definitely hit him up, he's amazing. And affordable too. He starts at ten dollars for his voice. Yeah, starting, starting at ten dollars. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we also we also sent him a video with subtitles, kind of explaining like here's the pacing that we'd like you to try and capture, and it worked out. Mm -hmm. So after we got that voiceover, we exported the video and finalized it. So here it is for a second time. You can check it out again. It wasn't always like this. There was a sense of normalcy. A normalcy I took for granted. I was a glass half full. But now, just empty. As summer approaches, I want to move forward. I want what's next. I want the next normal. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much our entire process on how we came up with this beer commercial. Fun shoot. It was a fun production. Very fun production. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was definitely a production that I personally felt really proud of. Yeah, I. Well, this is one of my favorite videos for sure we've done. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully we could do more with some other new, other uh, breweries around here. Yeah, and, and especially because like I I don't know about I know you're not like a huge beer guy, but I love craft beer. So being able to make like commercials for local breweries and stuff is like so fun for me. And then I get to try all this beer, like this mm -hmm. one right here. It's a great delicious. delicious. <laughs> You're not a beer guy, but if you did have to rate the beer that you're drinking right now- This one, I, I'm enjoying this beer. I okay. really do enjoy this one. So one to 10, what's your rating? And you have to give it like a point. You can't do like an amateur, like it's a four or it's a seven. You gotta be like, it's an 8.2. A 7.9. 7.9 on the monster. That's my rating for the next normal beer. The next normal um, beer is a seven. But I just, again, I just disclaimer, I'm not a beer guy. Not, Not a beer whatsoever. Guy. What would you rate this? So I would consider myself a beer guy. Um, and I'm going to give it a, I actually really enjoy this beer. I'd give it like an 8.2. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And like the low, the low, I love, I love how I said 8.2 is your example and it's the number that I'm picking. I would give it an 8.2. I like that it's, um, mm -hmm. it's very fruity, very hazy. Easy to drink. Easy to drink. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you're a beer guy. Especially for me too. Yep. If you're 21, if you're 21 at the legal age, cheers. If you're not, <laughs> All right, guys, that's pretty much it. If you like this video, give it a like. That way I know you like to see <coughs> Sorry. That way I know you like to see more content like this in the future. And if you haven't already, you can, I mean, you can subscribe if you want. That'd be kind of tight and pretty sick. Thanks for watching this video. Keep telling stories, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. I thought you did. Yeah, I, I heard something. Did you hear that? I heard that. I was like, but it was, I don't know what the hell that was. It's your stomach, maybe. <laughs> I guess. <laughs>